Okay, so welcome back. In this video, we'll show you how we captured two well-known and possibly the most photographed objects in the night sky, Orion and the Moon. Unlike the Moon, which can be photographed throughout the year, our latitude at 56 degrees north means that Orion is only visible in the winter months and barely rises more than 30 degrees above the horizon, so planning ahead is especially important. First thing we did was to download a free software program called Stellarium. If you haven't heard of it, or perhaps you have but have never used it, it's a powerful interactive model of the cosmos. With a few simple clicks, you can find almost any object in the sky, day or night, including satellites, the International Space Station, comets, meteors, asteroids, planets, stars, nebulae, galaxies and of course the Sun and the Moon. Okay, let's get started. First thing is to get the tripod up and level. Here we're setting the angle of the equatorial wedge to point towards Polaris. This will make it a little bit easier to find Polaris and the North Celestial Pole when we look through the polar scope on the tracker. After the bracket is mounted, we'll attach the counterweights to help balance the load. The polar scope illuminator just makes it easier to see the reticle in the dark. To improve tracking accuracy, we're using a miniscope and a black and white camera to provide visual feedback of the right ascension drift while the tracker rotates from east to west. We connect two cables to the black and white tracking camera. One will lead to the laptop, which controls the tracking software, and the other to the star tracker. We mark the foot of the lens to indicate its centre of gravity so that the camera and lens will be balanced in the declination axis. This means we only have to move the weights to achieve balance in one axis, the right ascension. Correct balance in both axes improves tracking accuracy tremendously. Alignment with the North Celestial Pole is achieved by looking through the polar scope, which is on the same axis as the right ascension, which spins as indicated by the blue arrow. We've added a right angle viewer simply to make it easier to view the scope by maintaining an upright standing position. Inside the scope is a reticle, which we use to measure the distance between Polaris and the North Celestial Pole. We've speeded this up so you can see Polaris rotating around the North Celestial Pole across several days. For convenience, we downloaded an app to our phone called Polar Scope Align Pro, which takes into account our local time elevation and latitude to determine the correct position of Polaris relative to the North Celestial Pole. Beginners often struggle to visually locate Polaris by eye, so we use two constellations to help us. We have superimposed the app reticle over the actual position of Polaris, and you can see that the app suggests placing Polaris in exactly the opposite position on the dial. The dial represents a 12-hour clock, divided into hours and minutes to help the viewer finally adjust the scope to achieve accurate polar scope alignment. Even though Polaris is just past the 8 o'clock mark, the app suggests adjusting the reticle so that Polaris appears to be where the yellow cross indicates at just after 2 o'clock. This next simulation shows what we see through the polar scope, and the reticle is indeed a copy of that shown by the app. All we have to do then is copy the position of Polaris on the dial and adjust the equatorial wedge so that Polaris appears to be in the same position when viewed through the polar scope. The next step is to connect the guide camera cable to the laptop, load the software, set the exposure time on the camera, 
choose the Star Tracker mode and start capturing images.